macroscopic repairs that we have. We have TAPP, we have TEP and we have IPOM. So, what are the three repairs that we have? We have trans abdominal, trans abdominal preperitoneal repair. Students, this is a demo class. So, I am not going into each and everything in detail, I am just but trying to cover up the concepts. So, trans abdominal preperitoneal repair, this is one thing. Then we have totally extra peritoneal repair. So, totally extra peritoneal repair. And then we have intraperitoneal. Now, this IPOM is more preferred for the ventral hernias. So, intraperitoneal on lay mesh repair. On lay mesh repair. In my routine classes, I shall discuss on lay, sub lay, in lay, over lay, under lay, everything in detail. Let us try to explore what is the concept of tap, what is the concept of tap. So, in this same box like diagram, try to understand that this is inguinal canal. So, I am not going to go inside the inguinal canal, but I am going to go behind the inguinal canal. Why? Because I want to place the mesh in between the abdominal cavity and the inguinal canal. So, what is my desired space? This space is my desired space. This is the space where I want to enter. So, I can establish my ports here and I can go inside. So, if I go into this space via this route, what is this known as? This is known as TEP and ultimately I will be placing a mesh here. This is what is totally extra peritoneal repair. So, your 5 mm, 10 mm camera port and again a 5 mm port will be here. The advantage of TEP bilateral hernias can be done in the same setting with a you can say with lesser time. The problem is that many a times due to adhesions there might be perforations in the peritoneum. So, a contralateral on the opposite side in the peritoneal cavity a pneumoperitoneum is created which will suppress this cavity and there will be loss of you can say space. Now, the beauty of laparoscopic repair is the abundance of the space that is what we all enjoy. You can also establish the ports here. So, you can establish 5 mm, 10 mm and again a 5 mm port and via these ports you can enter inside, you can cut open the peritoneum, go into the space and this is known as TAPP. What is this? Trans abdominal preperitoneal repair. Now, explaining you few important tips of the TAPP. I prefer to go for TAPP repair because I get a lot of space here. I enjoy this space. I am a bit claustrophobic. So, whenever I want to uh, enter into a cavity where I have to struggle with the vision, then what is the use of doing a laparoscopic surgery? So, TAPP when I am talking about establish pneumoperitoneum. Step number one is establish the pneumoperitoneum. This is one very, 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 very important thing. So, I prefer to and I will also teach you people to go via virus needle because virus is considered to be the safest less than 0.6% risk of injury. So, you will establish. So, where is your where is your target? Suppose I am talking about the right or let us take I will show you a case of left sided hernia. So, let us take example of left inguinal hernia. So, this is your target. So, where will your camera uh, where will be your monitor? Here will be your monitor. So, this is a place where your monitor shall be there. So, let me get it on the on this side. Okay. So, here will be your monitor and near the shoulder region, near the shoulder, where, which shoulder? Right shoulder, the surgeon shall be standing. So, this is what is very, 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 very important. So, you need to understand the ergonomics first before you go for this. Yeah. So, uh, Space of Bogros and space of Redzius are the name of same space. Yes, to, uh, yeah, yes, uh, Vivek, uh, uh, yes, Devraj. Space of Bogros is the preperitoneal space laterally. When you go medially in between the bladder and the pubic symphysis, the medial extension is known as space of Redzius. So, what is space of Redzius? Is the medial portion that is between the bladder and the pubic symphysis. Now, again, the same thing. You need to draw the two arcs. And what are these two arc students? One has to be 18 centimeter and the another has to be what students? 24 centimeters apart and within that domain you can establish your camera ports. So, 10 mm and then you can establish 
the contralateral or you can establish the ipsilateral. So, I am going for the contralateral port positioning. So, this is contralateral port placement for them. This is what is very, 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 very important. The next is, the second is, the second is identify, identify deep ring. This is what is important. And the next is, next is, so if this is the deep ring at 2 o'clock position, at 2 o'clock position, so this is what is very important. So, 2 o'clock position, 6 centimeter lateral. Remember, this is, this is what is very, very, very important. For the right, I am talking about the right, it is 2 o'clock, but when we talk about the left, it has to be, so 2 o'clock for the right side, hernias, and 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock for the left side hernias. This is important. So, I am doing it on the left side. So, I will go 6 centimeters away above this and I will cut open the peritoneum. This is what is very, very, very important. So, cut open the peritoneum. The next is create the space, create the space and the next is place the mesh, place the mesh. So, create the space and also reduce the content. This is what is very, very, very important. So, reduce the content and sap. So, I shall show you a case. I shall show you a case of this. So, let me just uh, take you to my YouTube channel. So, there I will show you a case of inguinal hernia. So, just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Okay. So, I am trying to, I will just explain you the case. This is a very, very, very interesting case. Let us try to understand this case. Okay. So, the first thing is you have to identify the target and then you have to go for an axis. So, I am going for a various axis of this patient. You can see I am going for a supra umbilical axis in this case. Yeah. The next thing is at 0.6 liter of the gas, the moment the 0.6 liter of gas enters, there is a loss of liver dullness. This is a sign that yes, the pneumoperitoneum has been created. And then I will exchange this with a port. So, port is head like a what? Pistol and you will go inside with a corkscrew movement. But this time you will go vertically. And with the hissing sound. So, now you can see the contents are there. Yeah, the, this is a classical left-sided inguinal hernia. So, I will just move inside and I will start with. So, you can see the left-sided hernias are technically more difficult because majorities of the surgeons are right-sided. And doing the dissection here might take some time. So, what I am doing? The next is to identify the deep ring. This is what is very, very, very important. So, where is the deep ring? This is, this is again, you cannot see the deep ring here. But, 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 but. So, this is the place where you have the deep ring. It is totally adhered. So, 10 o'clock, 6 centimeter or 5 centimeter lateral, I will start my dissection. This is what is very, 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 very important. So, I am just pinching of the peritoneum. So, pinching the peritoneum and starting the dissection. You have to be very gentle. So, let me just, uh, let me just show you this step. This is important. This is very, 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 very important. So, this is deep ring and then here you can see 5 to 6 centimeter at 10 o'clock position cut the peritoneum, cut the peritoneum. This is what is very, 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 very important. So, once you have cut the peritoneum, let us start the dissection. Now, I am not doing, I am not hustling, I am not struggling, I just you can say pulled the peritoneum towards me. I am allowing the air to enter. So, this is what is known as pneumodissection. This is an aided dissection that you see here. So, pneumodissection and can you see this avascular space? This is what is classically known as space of Bogros. So, can you see I do not need any energy device here. This is a surgery where only grasper and a scissor is needed. So, with my Maryland grasper, I am holding this traction, counter traction and dissection. So, if you are in a right place, if you do not cut open the fascia, you will never, never, never end up in what? 
you can say with bleeding so this is an avascular space so there are important things that you need to understand where do you want to provide the protection i want to place a mesh to cover up the myopectineal orifice and the lateral extent of myopectineal orifice is psoas therefore what should be your lateral extent of dissection it is psoas what should be your medial extent it should be up to the medial umbilical ligament medial umbilical ligament not the median so lateral border of the bladder or the lateral bladder pillar should be your margin and can you see i'm just going 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 just trying to sweep everything towards the abdominal wall i'm not pulling it towards me i'm trying to sweep it away so just see so gently 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 your dissection is done and i hope the video is clear the video is not lagging can you see the structures are you able to see the video yes so where is the defect can you see the defect i will show you the defect this is the defect in this case so this is the defect this is what is very 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 important so this is median medial to the deep ring so this is a direct inguinal hernia big direct defect you can see so let us try and we are going to the level of bladder remember how do you identify bladder fat in the pelvis belongs to bladder this is what is very 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 important so i am going up to the lateral border of the bladder so just see i have just i have just gone to that place so i'm just doing dissection they are all flimsy areolar tissue which you can see here so the dissection is about to be completed but yes now as i'm approaching on the medial side i'm encountering the sac and therefore there are adhesions of the sac what i am doing i'm just sweeping everything away i'm not pulling everything towards me because many a times we confuse the fascia transfer cellis as a pseudo sac keep on pulling damage it and hence we cry in problem therefore you should understand so how do you come to know that okay the medial extent is complete you will see a glistening white structure and that is what is known as cooper's ligament so cooper's ligament is your medial extent of dissection and visualization of the swas you don't need to bear up naked up the swas visualization of the swas so can you see the cooper's ligament and this is what is very 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 important so do you know what is the another name of cooper's ligament so cooper's ligament so let me use this color okay so when we talk about the cooper's the cooper's ligament what is the important point about cooper's ligament cooper's ligament it is known as light house of pelvis so light house of pelvis this is what is very 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 important very important thing that we need to understand so if you understand the basics basics you will never forget and this structure so let me label this this structure is cooper's ligament and this is the place where you may find corona of mortis so let us try to move forward and discuss this surgery more yeah okay next is next is so my medial extent is more or less clear now i need to understand i need to identify the sac but before that i need to secure the vascular structures as well as the vas so where is the triangle of doom where is the triangle of pain you will see here i will show quickly i will show you the structures so i will try to show you lot of structures important structures so see in this structure what you can see this is peritoneum so i am labeling it i am labeling it as peritoneum what is the structure which is entering medially this is what is gonadal vessel i am talking about the left side this is the left side what is the structure which is entering here this is what is vas so can you name this structure triangle this is triangle of doom so this is triangle of doom and this is triangle of pain so triangle of doom triangle of pain here in front of you you can again enjoy this triangle as i dissect so i have shown you i have shown you the video you can just see this video so this is the place where you see yellow structure where my grasper is there right now scissor is there and this is the place this is known as triangle of doom so can you see the white cord yeah i am into the triangle of doom right now so laterally this is gonadal vessel then this is so again i'm trying to those who couldn't understand i'm again trying to explain this and triangle to you so look at this triangle gonadal vessel vas peritoneum then you have the gonadal vessel vas and there is iliopubic tract here 
you might not see because I'm not bearing it off. So this is triangle of pain. This is triangle of doom. This is what is very, very, very important. So once these triangles are dissected, so I have dissected the space. Now the next is to separate out the sac also right now. So after securing the structure, I need to separate the sac. So you will very soon you will see the sac coming out. Yeah, so the sac is almost out. So this is the sac that has come out. It's very important to identify the sac. So the sac is the sac is here. I'll not cut it off because I'll use it for the reinforcement. So you can see the sac is there. Now I have dissected all the structure. It's a bloodless film. You are having a 10 times, 15 times magnified view. So you even RBCs are shining like what bleeding. So this is triangle of doom. This is triangle of pain. So now what is the next thing? I will roll and take the mesh inside. So I will take the mesh inside after opening the wall. The mesh is taken inside and this is what is very, very, very important. So introduction of the mesh. So the moment the mesh is taken inside, yes. The next is you have to unroll the mesh and after unrolling the mesh, you have to splay the mesh. Once the mesh is splayed, then you need to uh, uh, you need to place the tacker. So what is this? What am I doing? Uh, I am placing the tackers. So what I, what is this placement placement of tacker? So this is where you need to understand. So what are tackers? Mechanical fixing device. They reduce your time. Otherwise you will have to do the suturings. So you have to stay above the. You can say iliopubic tract. You don't have to go below the level of iliopubic tract. And you can see I am placing the tacker. One I have placed. The second one again after spreading the mesh neat and clean. I will press, I will place the tacker and now I am just closing. So again I am closing the peritoneum. So what I am doing? I am just doing a closure of the peritoneum. So this is what is cl peritoneal closure. So even I am reinforcing using that sac also, the sac with the fat. This will also get go, uh, give some extra protection to the space. Now whenever you are doing this, deflate the abdomen. When you are fixing the mesh, deflate it so that there is no stretchability. Students. This is going to peritonalize within 2-3 days and the mesh is going to give you the reinforcement. So this is done for this patient. I hope you enjoyed this classical you can say uh, lecture on TAPP. I wish I could have taught more but yes in my routine classes I will be taking this topic in more depth and with more adventure. So I hope you enjoyed today's session. Do uh, give the links of the class to your near and dear ones. To your